Hey everybody, this is Carissa Keister from Stillwater Area Public Schools, home of the ponies, and you are listening to Pony Voices. On this show, we celebrate the amazing people of Stillwater Schools and give you an insider's view of what is happening across our district. Not only is our mascot unique, so are our stories. So grab a cup of coffee, get comfy, and settle in for our latest episode. Today we're talking about Stillwater Area High School. It is the school at the very heart of our community. It's full of pony pride and has more than a century of history and tradition. It is also home to some pretty remarkable students and staff. But is the high school too big? That's the question I'll be asking our guests today. You won't want to miss what they have to say. It was quite scary seeing the absolutely enormous school. There are so many people and like the halls are so big. It was so hard to find where I was going. (laughs) I did think the school was a little bit big, but there's a lot of people that like helped me around. I think having a bigger school, you have, I don't know, more classes and more opportunities to do different things. There's so many different teams, sports, clubs to join. you know, anybody can find something to, to do here. Big, 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 big. It makes it kind of have a community feel, and there's like different communities in one big community. So, I think there's like a very like inclusive aspect of this school. Even like when you come here, it might like seem big, but like the people here like make it feel like it's home. Well, I'm here with Stillwater Area High School Principal Rob Bach. Thanks for joining us today, Rob. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the high school, and it seems pretty fitting that we started by hearing from some of our kids and and their experiences. Was there anything that you heard in that opening clip that um, stuck out to you? Well, it all sticks out to me. You know, anytime you hear kids talking about their experience at school, um, it all hits home because that's everybody's truth. And so you certainly want to hear all of the good, but you also want to hear what some of their concerns are, too, so that you know how to how to go about addressing that. All of the kids talked about the school feeling big to them when they first came here. Um, But they even went on to talk about how it felt like a community or one girl even said it felt like home. Does that surprise you at all? No, it doesn't, because I tell people the best part about working in Stillwater is that we have the best combination of both academics and community feel of any place you could ever ask for. I have been uh, fortunate enough to work in three different buildings over the course of a 30 year career. And um, one building we had fantastic sense of community. Um, It was just great the way people kind of rallied together around it, but I felt like our academic programming really needed to pick itself up. I was in another school where the academic programming off the charts, but I didn't feel like we just had the same sense of community or that the school had the same kind of soul. And coming here to a place like Stillwater, our academics are off the charts. Our kids are going to get a world-class educational experience and The school holds a really prominent place in the community and parents are proud to send their kids here. We have a number of parents who went to school here themselves. They're proud to call themselves ponies. You go to out in the community during the course of the day and you see kids wearing the pony gear. That says something that's that tells you that people are proud about where they where they call school. Great transition. I was going to ask you about pony pride. We hear a lot about that in the community. Everybody's proud to be a pony. What does that really look like at the school and why is it important to have that sense of pony pride? Well, I think it's important to have because that's part of how you know um, that this is meaningful and that everybody's going to have a decent experience when they come. That's part of how people invest in school. You know, we talk um, on the educational side, we talk about student engagement all the time. We know that there's a correlation between when students engage and how well they're going to, to do in school. And students are more likely to engage if they feel good about where they go to school. So um, there's some natural correlations there. So if I remember correctly, you're not a Minnesota homegrown kind of guy. You grew up on the West Coast. Is that right? Transplanted. You kind of moved around a little bit back and forth. I actually, I was born in St. Paul and lived there till I was about nine. And then, yes, we moved around and I ended up junior high and high school actually out in California. Yeah. Before I came back. What was your high school like? Uh, my high school was somewhat similar, I guess you could say. It was, at the time, considered a larger high school. I had about 550 kids in my graduating class. Good, solid academic programming. Um, number of students that took advantage of that. Number of students that um, had opportunities to do other things, too. 
Did you always know you wanted to be a high school principal? <laughs> no, not even close. Uh, not even close. In fact, um, you know, like even when I started my teaching career, I'll, I'll never forget my first year teaching. Um, I was in the classroom and I was teaching and some guy uh, came in who was subbing for another class or something like that. And so we just kind of started up a random conversation and I asked him, you know, if he was looking for a full time teaching job. And he said, no, I'm thinking more about administration. I think I'm going to become an assistant principal. And I thought, why would anyone want to do that? So, no, we, we evolve over time. You probably still ask your question, yourself that question sometimes. Some days more than <laughs> others. Yeah, sure. Um, you've been here for a while now. You also I have two kids of your own that have recently gone through high school. So you've been a high school parent. You've been a high school administrator and teacher. Um, what's your favorite thing about high school kids? You know, I think my favorite thing about them is just the idea that this is just such a dynamic age. This is an age when kids are beginning to become independent. You're running a place that's filled with people that are all in roughly that same stage that are figuring out for themselves, what do I want to do with my time? How do I want to spend my time? Who do I want to invest this with? And what kinds of things do I want to pursue? Um, those things start to become realities for kids at this age. And I think that's just really dynamic and really cool. You mentioned you've worked in some other schools. And as being a high school principal, I'm sure you visited a lot of schools in the area. What makes Stillwater Area High School special? Again, to me, I just say it over and over and over again. It's the combination of academic programming and community feel. There's just not an awful lot of places that can do the things academically for kids that we can. We have kids that, you know, if, if they want to go to Duke, we can get them into Duke, and we, we have kids that do that. Um, we have other kids that want to go off to two-year school. We send more kids to Century College than any other place. We have kids that go off to the military. We have a Pathways program that introduces kids to the trades, that gets kids plugged into um, employment opportunities if they want that right away as soon as they're done. The comprehensive array of programming that we have for kids, I think is just is second to none. And that's part of what makes us special, especially when you combine that with the idea that people in this community love Stillwater Area High School. They're proud to call themselves ponies. What are you most proud of in your time here? Um, well, I'm just proud, honestly, to be associated with the school every single day. I'm proud to call myself the, the principal of a place that's as special as this. Again, I don't take it for granted whenever I run into parents at a sporting event or when I talk with parents at graduation. Um, it amazes me how many times people in the community stop me and say, thank you for what you do here. That just doesn't happen to every principal. You know, it, principals, you look at all the things in movies and things like that. Like you always think of, you know, the guy in Ferris Bueller that's just running around, you know, trying to si assign detentions to, to kids. And people here get that the, the job is so different than that. And that to me is special. I've never once taken it for granted. I, I just, I, I still can't believe I got the job to, to be able to come here. I still have to kind of pinch myself over that. I can't stop thinking about Bueller now. Thank you for that. <laughs> Bueller, Bueller, anyone, anyone? Every year you get a new group of ninth graders and a new group of first-time high school parents. I'm going to be a first-time kindergarten parent here next year, so I know the anxiety that comes with anything first time with your kids. So what do you hear from those families? What's the biggest concern that comes up when they're sending their kids here? Well, clearly a big one is the size of school. I know that that is a concern for parents, and um, we host an event called Pony Possibilities, which as their kids are going through the registration process and signing up for classes for ninth grade, we host um, this evening that essentially is like an open house that tries to demystify what Stillwater Area High School is. Let's introduce them to the registration process. Let's introduce them to who we are as people and as professionals and about how we, how we go about doing business. And one of the messages that I give parents on that night, one of the primary messages, is the idea that I believe firmly to my core that while there are advantages and disadvantages to big schools and small schools, I feel very strongly that big schools can replicate the advantages of small schools if they're intentional about how they go about doing their business. But small schools simply can't replicate the advantages of big schools. Obviously, the advantage of a big school is the, the amount of programming that we have. We're going to, as the, the student said in the clip at the beginning, we have more different clubs and activities and things that capture kids' interests. Having a big school means that when parents send their kids here, you're more likely to find other kids. Even if your kid has some super eclectic interests, they're more likely to find other kids that have similar interests. And that 
is a bonding experience for people. That's good, that's healthy, all of those kinds of things. The advantage obviously of being a small school is this feeling of security and this idea that you know parents kind of have that they know that there's gonna be a little cocoon of support around their kid, their kid's not gonna fall through the cracks. The message that I tell parents all the time is at Stillwater, we are smart and we are intentional about how we go about that. So we can, we can make sure that those feelings still exist here. A prime example of that, one of the things that I introduce parents to on that night is a, a program that their kids are involved in when they come in in ninth grade. It's called the BAR program. Kids don't sign up for it. They don't need to know anything about it. This is just part of how we do business kind of behind the scenes. But one of the things that it entails is we're going to take three of our teachers and form intentional teams of students around those teachers. So if I'm a science teacher and I have, say, 30 kids in my class and I teach five classes a day, that means that I come into contact with 150 kids. What we do at Stillwater High School is we very intentionally schedule, we'll hand schedule if necessary, to make sure that the same 150 students that I have as a science teacher, there's an English teacher that's gonna get those same 150 kids, and there's a social studies teacher that's gonna get those same 150 kids. And those three teachers then form a team with the same common group of kids. Not only that, but then those teachers are required to meet. They give up prep time every week to sit down and have intentional meetings where they talk specifically about the students that are involved in their classes. And the whole premise of this is to get to know students on a personal level, not just the, the academics and how are they, how is Johnny doing in your class? It's not about whether Johnny's getting an A or a B or a C, but it's about who is Johnny and what are the strengths that Johnny brings to the table? Because if we know Johnny as a person and we know um, what his strengths are, we share those out as a team so that everybody's in a position to build upon those strengths and capitalize on that to try to make sure that Johnny is successful in class. And every single student, you know, if you figure that everyone in ninth grade then gets plugged into that, and again, kids don't, they might or might not be aware of that, um, but if every single kid is, is plugged into that, and we have conversations that are intentionally going to center around every single student. So if, you know, if five or six students get brought up at each meeting, our goal is every single student is going to be discussed in one of those formalized meetings to make sure that all of our the teachers on that team know what the strengths are and know how to how to maximize Johnny's potential while he's there in class. That's a piece that again when I talk with parents about if you want to make sure that your kid doesn't fall through the cracks, I can't think of a more powerful technique and a more powerful way of doing that. And that doesn't matter whether your high school is 200 students or 2,000 students. That's, that's personalized one-on-one -on -one, um, care that your student is going to get when they come here. That's really powerful to take this class of 600 and some students coming in as ninth graders and really breaking it down into these smaller numbers where you're building those relationships. Um, I know there's a body of research out there that says school size or even class size really isn't as important as relationships. And I think that's what you're trying to get to here. So um, tell me a little bit more about those relationships and how we're really building connections with kids. Well, I think you see it all the time, both um, in the classroom and outside of the classroom. You know, um, I'm outside in the hallway every day and I, I'm fist bumping every single kid. And I, I actually get comments several times during the course of the year if we have a visitor or something like that and somebody happens to be standing um, next to me or visiting with me. I say, okay, you know what? I got to go out in the hallway now and, and hang out with kids. Come on out with me while we go do that. And just the sheer number of kids that wind up popping by and I'll say, um, Hey, Fatima, how we doing? Hey, Nadir, how we doing? Hey, Joey, how's it going? And the, I literally have people asking me, how many kids do you know in this school? Yeah, there's a lot of school, a lot of kids in school. And I don't know every student's name by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm invested in, in kids here. I go to the sporting events. I see their names on the choir programs. I see their names on the athletic registers. I see their names um, when we sign them up for ACT um, sessions in classrooms, all of those kinds of things. And our teachers do the exact same thing. Our teachers are there talking with kids about what they're doing outside of school. Um, they're talking with kids about what their events are um, away from the classroom. And all of those things are the kinds of things that develop relationships and hopefully help kids feel good about where they're going to school. So is Stillwater Area High School too big? So what our high school is perfect. It's great because again, the, the point is there's no problem with being too big if you're intentional about the, the steps that you take to make it feel small for kids. And I think if you asked a lot of our kids, our kids will tell you as, the, as you saw in the, the conclusions of the voices that were on there, um, 
they feel good about it. They feel connected. It's all about whether a student actually feels connected to school. And we have more things to try to draw kids in and make kids feel connected to school here at Stillwater Area High School than a lot of other places. Speaking of that intentionality, I'm going to actually invite Tara Peterson to join the conversation with us. Tara is a longtime teacher in the district. She spent some time here at the high school, at the middle school, and is now recently back at the high school. Um, And your job, I believe, Tara, is to make sure those kids aren't slipping through the cracks. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Bar coordinator is my official title, which stands for Building Assets, Reducing Risks. And I have the honor and privilege of working with the teacher teams and um, talking about those students And our goal, like Rob said, is to talk about every student um, in those teacher meetings. And and we always start with their strengths and their connection to school. Um, And then we talk about if if they might be struggling or if there's something that we can do to support them more. Maybe they need to be challenged. Maybe they're too challenged and and we need to find a better better fit for them. Maybe there's an activity that we could connect them with. Um, And so I have that privilege of meeting with teachers every week. What's the power of that teacher connection for them to be able to actually sit down and spend time together? I don't think that's something that we've always done in the district. A lot of times teachers just kind of teach and and do their thing, but to be able to talk about students that they have in common. Well, as a teacher, I I taught for 22 years, and oftentimes you feel isolated, and you struggle with a student, and you're not quite sure, you know, how to help them, but to be able to sit in a space um, and to hear that other teachers are struggling the same, or maybe they're not struggling our, our teachers are incredibly talented, and for them to sit down and say, hey, what about this? Have we tried this? Or who's called home? Or what about what about having them partner up with this student? Um, that, those, that constant collaboration is happening, and so teachers don't feel isolated. They feel part of a team, which in turn builds our students and the relationship and making this school feel smaller. So I asked uh, Principal Bach this question. I'll ask you, too. Is the high school too big? I don't think so. I think it's, um, and I can say that as a mom of elementary kids who will eventually go here, (laughs) I walk the halls often and think of my girls being here someday. Um, And I I agree with what Mr. Bach says about how there's so many opportunities and for students to, to find their niche. It might take some time, and that's where that piece of teachers and other staff connecting students and knowing them and saying, hey, have you heard of this group or this sport or this activity? Um, And people here are dedicated to help students find their niche. And so I don't think it's too big. I think um, it's a great place to be, and it's great to be a pony. You both have talked about the opportunities for kids, and I've looked at the list of um, clubs, and sometimes I'm my mind's kind of blown, like, really? That's a thing? Tell me about some of those clubs that are kind of those niche clubs, those those clubs you never would have thought of or maybe hadn't realized were even out there. Sure. I mean, we develop new clubs every year because we do it really based on what student interest is. So we don't just automatically roll over every single club from year to year just so that we can advertise the idea that we have 200 different clubs on campus. That's not the point. The The point is to try to tailor an experience that kids will respond to. And so, you know, as different shifts or trends wind up kind of popping up in terms of what kids are interested in, that's what we try to respond to. All kids have to do is find a, a little group of kids together and someone who's willing to be an advisor. And as long as that kind of ties into the, the larger mission of the school, we're happy to approve everything. So, you know, that's how robotics started. It's how anime started. The Pokemon Club, you know, a couple of years ago when kids are, you know, wandering around all over the place going, oh my gosh, it's a Diglett. And, you know, they find something. <laughs> Uh, all of that stuff is just kind of examples of how um, we've said, you know what? All right, yeah, there's a there's an opportunity for kids to have a social outlet there. Let's let's build it. If you build it, they will come. Yeah, I'm always impressed when I come in and see what the kids are doing, and I'm like, why didn't we get to do that kind of stuff when I was in school? So it is pretty impressive. Unfortunately, we do have to wrap up. So I'm going to get to the last question here. Um, I think it's fair to say that we've learned that a big school isn't a bad thing today. In fact, that it has a lot of advantages, especially when you have that focus on really making it personalized. And um, so I just want to thank you for that and also ask one last question is, um, if you haven't already said it, why is Stillwater the best option for families in our community? There's a lot of options out there. Why is Stillwater the best? I can't emphasize enough the phenomenal staff. Our teachers care and love our students and work incredibly hard to have really cool, fun opportunities for them, work really hard to connect with them, um, and work really hard 
to just make this a great experience. It's it's just a great place to be. And again, to re- reiterate the whole the feeling of Stillwater. You're proud to be a pony. You're proud to be in Stillwater and be from Stillwater. And and that's something that I think as a school we work really hard to make help all of our kids feel welcome and safe and and feel that pony pride as well. We've just got great people here. If your kid comes and when your kid comes to Stillwater Area High School, we're going to take good care of them. And I know we've talked um, and you asked a great question, Carissa, about is it too big? That's a, I get it. That's a legit question. And I I understand the concern that many parents have when they come here. But what I tell parents all the time is we've got really, really good people here. And when your kid comes, we're going to take really, really good care of them here. And again, I think when you ask our our kids, the proof is in the pudding. They're going to tell you that too. That's not just lip service coming from me because I'm the principal and I I like the place. Um, Our kids are going to tell you when they, when we conduct exit interviews with kids as seniors, when they leave and we ask them not just about what are you doing now? What are you going to go do? But ask them about their experience here, I can't tell you the, the percentage of kids that relate the, the idea that they had a positive experience while they were here and they were really, really glad that they came. I think our students said it best, this is home. And so I really appreciate the atmosphere that you've created as a future Pony parent. I'm very excited about the opportunities my daughter will have, and I'm excited for our community to have this right here, this gem right here in our own community. So thank you both for taking time to visit with us today. I really appreciate it. And a big thank you to our listeners. I hope they have gained some new perspectives on Stillwater Area High School and maybe even discovered some new reasons to be proud to be a Pony. If you enjoyed this episode of Pony Voices, please share it with your friends and neighbors. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast to make sure you never miss an episode. Until next time, go ponies! S-E-I-O!